This lesson is about creating a configuration item or an asset, however you want to call it. Uh, remember the other lesson that we had, we created the kind of the references for the configuration items, the parameters to work with it and to have everything set up how you want it. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a configuration item by itself based on those uh, parameters that we set. There's different ways to get there. There's the plus sign here on top and you can create a new configuration item. Once you're not on a client means that this way uh, the system does not know which client. And that's of course going to be the first question that you have on which client. If you would do this same thing too from a client, let's see what we have in there. We have my test client still in there. Indeed, we have the test company over there. We open that, that one up. And if you would create a uh, configuration item right away from here, also have the button new and you go to configuration item. Then you will see that it already pre fills in the test company, as you can see over here. Now let's move forward with this one. Uh, main important thing here on the top is uh, I would suggest to work with those ones uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the first time. So configuration item category is set to standard. Now this is the one that you need to apply. Let's say today we're going to do a server. Apply the server. And then it uh, brings you a kind of a warning. It's not a warning, it's an update. Because you're changing the whole field. Remember the, the ticket category and the uh, configuration item category, they uh, represent what you display on the page. So yes, save my changes and update the category. Then there's a configuration item type. Again, I'm going to also choose the server. And that's just a listing. So the category is more for the layout of this whole page. The type is just how to find it. Now here's as a product. And right now what we know from the uh, upcoming update, here you can see there's, there's several servers in the system. Uh, we'll choose a, uh, let's say we're going to choose a, a regular server. Uh, this is still a mandatory field, but it looks like in the, in the upcoming update, uh, this is probably won't be necessary anymore. You have really, uh, different items where you list this one as a server. I can list it to a contact. Usually for a server, we don't list a contact because the server is a generic one. A contact we use when it's basically uh, designated to a particular person. Um, so a server is usually not dedicated to one person. Status, uh, status is active. Of course, we really, right now we leave it active, but if you don't use it anymore, once you have decommissioned a, a system, uh, always go into configuration items and make it inactive. That's what you do over here. And then you would press save and close. Since this is a new one, I'm going to press it active. Serial number, that's whatever the number that uh, that manufacturer gave. Call it like that. Reference number, uh, you can say it's in the it's the it's the the DC server. And reference name is also in here. Uh, maybe you have a, an asset tag, special special labeling, or the client has a special numbering on it. Uh, you can put it over there. So there's, there's multiple ways that you can do over here. Description, you can even say is uh, uh, this is the old one with, with old OS, something like that. And you have a little bit more description of what you know. Uh, install by warranty. The install date is what we always suggest is not the actual date of today. Like you say over here, it will take the day of today of this lesson, but put in the original manufacturer uh, supply date. So let's say this server was uh, supplied on January 1st in uh, 2017. And then the warranty expiration is indeed the actual expiration. Now in this case it could be, let's say it's a three year server. So the warranty expired on 2020. This would be a three year server. Now that you have the original install date, you can easily see uh, the, the, the warranty that is in there. The vendor has already been set as a specialized equipment that's that's probably been set up with that particular server, but you still have the option to, to make a change over here. You can get the list of the vendors that are in the system and you can choose a different vendor. Location is the primary location. Again, this location is being pulled from the from your client. If you have multiple locations in here, but that's just a physical location with an address. It's not a location, for example, like a, like server room. That's what you can do over here, area. And let's go with, let's load, let's go with second for server room. Number of users, you can also fill in how many users are on this one. Let's say 25. This particular client does not have any contracts, so I can select a contract over here. Uh, but usually when there's a contract, you can select the contract over here. And make sure it may be in a different example. Service bundle, and you can also 
put in which, which SLA is being applied. Then you have a whole bunch of user-defined fields. And like I said, these are user-defined fields. So brand, you can put in again here. Is it the Dell or is it an HP? You can put your IP address, your LAN IP, make a model. So even which power edge, for example, is it? You can give it a name. Maybe you have it called uh, SVR uh, DC01, uh, something like that. Which operating system? Um, there's also a way uh, to list those operating systems from a pull-down menu. Uh, that's all being handled in the user-defined fields. You can make uh, roles, how do you man, domain controller, SSID, of course, that's for a server, not, not uh, applicatory, so that should be kind of turned off in this one. Is there a URL, username, uh, also password? Then on the other hand, you don't want to have the username and password right away in here, so those ones should be marked. There's terms in this case. I don't think there's a term for this particular uh, server. But it's again all tweaking, and I'm just going to show you some examples of all that is possible. To your right side, as you can see, there's the regular items, product, server name, manufacturing product number. And there's a uh, hardware code already is in there because this is a default product that we selected by here by a server. So it gives you already some default information in here. If you need another uh, item, then you just select a different product over here, and then you can change it. Here's the default info of your company and contact. Uh, were the last five tickets? Of course, nothing right now to be uh, shown because this is just a brand new configuration item. There's nothing there. And it could also be that there's other configuration items that are listed with it. So since this is a brand new one, there's nothing there. Now on the bottom, there's also notification. Quickly uh, open this one up. And as you can see here, you can also uh, notify somebody if there's a configuration item created. This is more for the one-offs. There's also through the workflow rules, which is a different lesson. There's also several ways where you can uh, notify people when a new uh, configuration item is being, uh, being created. Now you have the option to say, okay, save. You press save and close, uh, and then the, the screen uh, closes. But here's also the option to save and create new. You can kind of go with the same note. You can save and add a note, and also save and copy. I want to show you a couple of other items too, where we're going to find a couple of uh, configuration items. I pulled up our other company, and here under company details, you can go to configuration items. And it will show you the configuration items that this particular client has. As you can see, there's several uh, items over here. There's even a tractor. But let's do the server. Let's right click on it. And it will do a edit. And once we're in the edit section, then we have the ability to apply contracts. And I quickly check this client has also some contracts in place. So that's where we can easily uh, use that. We scroll a little bit down. Then over here, you have the section uh, contract SLAs. And you can see it's not grayed out. Right now, it's, uh, it's available. You can please press the little cabinet button and it will pull up the, the contracts that are available. And then it all, once you have selected one of the contracts, then you can also choose which service bundle from that particular contract you can uh, you want to choose. Let's say we're going to choose the uh, just the regular one, the top one. And now you can see that the service bundle is now available. We can press on that one. And that brings down the pull down menu of what particular service you want to add to it. You select it, and once you're done, you can press save and close. The other item that I wanted to show you is that you also can copy a configuration item. And when you hover over one of these configuration items that you have over here, you do a right click on it, and that brings up that little uh, menu, and then you say copy. And that basically brings up the same page as before. The only uh, option that it will tell you right away that you have to make sure that you uh, change the serial number because that's one of the items that Autodesk is checks for. So there's checks and balances. And you also have the option to either way merge it into another configuration item and also move it. You can move it to a different, different location or a different client. Copying it is even uh, possible to copy it to a different client. Merge into another configuration item means that you're going to be uh, joining those two items together. Make sure that your fields are always correct. So do a quick check before you do it so you get a little bit more experience on it. How does it exactly work? And, and that's what you can do. And then the last button is the delete button. 
Um, once you have created a configuration item, uh, there's tickets uh, added to it, then most likely you can't delete it anymore. But uh, once you have a configuration item with no activity on it, then for sure you can delete it and then you have the button over here. I think that concludes all on how to create a configuration item with a couple of uh, items on how to easily edit it to it, how to add it to the contract. And if you have any more questions, then please visit our Facebook group and post a comment there. Thank you.